what stack to use, uh, what's popular these days, which company uses which tech stack, uh, what's my opinion on the tech stacks for software development in Japan. Uh, so in this video, I'll be comparing some of the tech stacks or tech pro programming languages and the frameworks that are most commonly used in Japan. And I'll give you my take on this, uh, on these, uh, on these numbers. And uh, that's today's topic. Hey, what do you want? So uh, before you do that, remember to like, sub, connect with me on LinkedIn. There's the Discord in the link below, and also my blog, my crappy blog website, which should have some projects very soon. So I'll give you the uh, TLDR of this video. I'll be going over, is it four? I'll be going over four commonly used websites in Japan. These are not all the websites, and I'll go through um, front end, back end, and smartphone development. I'll be sharing with you the Excel data of my findings. And just to quickly go over, it's the uh, for front end, I'll be going over React, Vue, Next, Nux, and Angular. I don't know about other countries, I'm just talking about Japan, specifically Tokyo. For back end, we'll be looking at uh, PHP, Java, uh, .NET, I don't know if you call it .NET or VB.NET, uh, Node.js, Golang, uh, and Ruby on Rails. And for smartphone, we'll be looking at for smartphone development and the iPad is a Swift, Kotlin, Flutter, and React Native. So before I even get into everything, I'll just give you my quick basic uh, basic opinion is that whatever whatever framework you, here's something now, whatever framework or library, like if you enjoy it, just use it. You just shouldn't worry too much. You can find most jobs in uh, Angular, React, Vue, or, but I think things like HTMX, I think, and um, Svelte, it's, it's pretty difficult. And if you choose uh, less uh, popular frameworks or libraries, you might, it might be a lot harder to find jobs. And if you're in Japan, you're on a working visa, you kind of uh, don't want to risk that of uh, not being employed or not having a freelance project. So just, let's just keep that in mind. And that goes for backend as well. If you have, uh, I mean, Ruby on Rails is still, there's still quite a few jobs around with, with uh, Ruby on Rails, but if you're, if you're going through the Golang, you might have a lot, you might have a little less. And um, I mean, if you're, if you're into Rust or something, it's, I don't know any company who really uh, hires around Tokyo. There are, there are probably some out there, but um, yeah, that's for backend and for smartphone. As long as you stick to uh, Kotlin, Swift, Flutter, and React Native, you, you're gonna find uh, work out there. So the following piece of data is probably not the best indicator of what is what is out there, but I think it's a it's a good what is it feeler. It's a good it's a good basic data I have here. It's probably not the best indicator or the best uh, evidence of or which stack to use, but it's a good. Uh, Good to get a basic idea or a feeler of uh, what it's like in Japan based on these four websites are uh, Wantedly, Indeed, Dota, and LevTech Freelance. Just put a LevTech Free. You can see here the green data points are the most uh, projects or jobs on those websites. We'll go through by uh, each framework or library. We'll start off with React, and with React, that's the most the most jobs in Japan for front end are in React. React is the most popular and with all four of these websites, you can see that React is, there are significantly more jobs in React than any other front end library. And the second one here is Vue.js. This is probably no surprise to uh, most people. No surprise here, Vue is the second most common or popular front end framework or library on these four websites. And then we have, we'll skip to Angular. Angular, there are quite a few Angular jobs, but just comparing to React of you, uh, yeah, the, I, have, I haven't ever used Angular freelancing in the past five years, but I have used React of you next and next in my freelance projects. And that's probably because Angular is mostly used in those in those large corporate projects, which I haven't, which I haven't touched yet. Well, here and then of course you have a uh, Next and Nux. Nux is making its pop, is getting quite popular in the past uh, two years. Uh, I've, I'm currently working on a Next project, 
project and I have been working on Next for over two years now and it seems to be the popular go-to. I wouldn't add Remix on here. Remix is, uh, I have used it for a project, but not so many out there. So if you're just looking to get a job in Japan working front end, more likely gonna stick, more, most likely you're, you will be working with React and sticking to your React is a pretty good uh, direction to go. But of course, once you learn React, you could easily jump to Next. But of course, like I said at the start of this video, if you stick with any of these uh, four library or frameworks, you'll be quite fine whether you're freelancing or working as a full-time employee in Japan. Now we go to the back end, and this is not so much of a surprise to me that PHP is PHP and Java the most used, or they have the most projects or jobs in on the these four platforms. Uh, no surprise of PHP and not so surprised with Java. If you are a back-end engineer and you just want to secure yourself in Japan, learning PHP or Java is a great way to go. Remember, these numbers aren't exact. I just searched and got these numbers. It could be a quarter of this. It could be less, much less than half of these jobs out there. But in general, from my experience over the last, what, uh, eight, nine years, PHP and Java are pretty solid, safe back-end. And I, I think those who use .NET, I don't even know what you call it because I've never used it. A lot of the uh, those what you call legacy companies or large corporate, uh, Toyota and all those companies still probably use a lot of .NET for their server side, uh, server side applications. No surprise there either. Uh, what you might see as well quite a bit is uh, Node.js related technologies like uh, Nest and uh, Express around and yeah these jobs are around and most of my back-end work the past uh, five or six years freelancing is in Node.js and that was my choice I could choose which language I'd use and I, I chose in most of them uh, Express uh, it's just because it's easier to code in one language and I was getting quite good at it at the time and lately I've been seeing quite a lot of uh, Golang pro uh, projects or jobs around current project I'm working on is Next.js, but the server side is written in Golang. So that's something interesting. Uh, not a lot of jobs, but you see, you do see them around. And I have to add on here, it's not backend, but it, I was gonna add on Ruby by itself, but Ruby by itself is not used as much as it probably was in what, 2008 and five. There is quite a bit of Ruby on Rails, which is why I probably should have added a, uh, like a full, full stack solution like Ruby on Rails and uh, I kind of didn't but anyway I just added Ruby on Rails anyway because you do see a bit of Ruby on Rails projects around but you just can't compare to PHP and Java you're pretty much secure for smartphone dev we want, we're, the most popular here is a uh, Swift of course uh, of course I don't, I don't think of course just they think it's the uh, a lot of iOS applications are being created these days to be honest, I don't know, you can tell me. Uh, I haven't used React Native for over five or I think six years ago I used it. And I thought that was gonna be the biggest thing because you can just easily get front end uh, web developers to make smartphone applications. But I guess Flutter seems to be making its way as a popular solution in Japan. Uh, so it's not dead yet, I guess. It's still quite popular compared to a React Native. But I, should, I think you shouldn't focus exactly on these uh, numbers in terms of uh, are there really 21,000 React jobs. Just the point of this is just to see comparison between libraries and frameworks on these popular websites. The, this is the interesting part. It's easy to think that everything is in React when if you look at these numbers, you can easily tell that uh, Vue is still quite popular in Japan and there are still a few Angular projects out there and I even added simple jQuery projects uh, there are still quite a lot of jQuery projects around in Japan uh, legacy projects uh, instead of rewriting the whole thing in uh, Vue or React people are just fixing them up continuing on with jQuery which is still fine with many cases so now I'd like to talk about the types of companies that use certain types of languages or frameworks libraries of course, we're going to have to start off with React. A lot of small companies, a lot of startups. It's the popular thing to go to. Same as Vue, 
Same with Next and Nuxt. And now Angular, you have the big corporate. This is my view. I don't even know if it's true or not, but large companies would use Angular, which is, I can't even say large companies because I know large companies who use Vue and large companies, let's say uh, corporate, large corporate companies still use React. They use all these stacks, all these libraries. So for front end, it's hard to say, but what I do know about back end is you will find uh, large, these legacy companies, let's call them legacy companies. Uh, and that's not a, a knock on them or anything, just companies who have been around for a while still stick with Java. Uh, and some of them still have a lot of, there's quite a bit of PHP around. Java, PHP and .NET. I think these three are still king in Japan. But in saying that, if most of the guys watching this, you guys are mostly foreigners. And so the culture in, a, let's say, a Java only company or a, a legacy, one of these legacy companies might not be, uh, might not be for you. And then you have these languages like uh, Node and Golang or, you know, these kind of popular server side uh, soy stack frameworks and libraries where the it might be more of a startup feeling uh, younger people uh, more adventurous so there's something to keep in mind that your language might also change the type of company you can enter and like let's say the dotnet companies these are these companies will most likely no one speaks english in them so you have to keep that in mind that if you want to enter a company that speaks english you might have to find a certain tech stack that is common amongst the uh, you know the English speaking tech companies. So in conclusion, just stick to the stack that you enjoy. Any one of those uh, languages or libraries that I showed you on the Google Sheets, in any of those are pretty much fine. Don't do the same thing I did. I spent three years uh, like doing D3.js. I spent, then I skipped to, I jumped to Vue for another few years and went to React. So maybe ideal is to stick to one and get really good at one stack or one library, one framework. Of course, if you're a super genius engineer, you can jump around to any stack and uh, get paid quite well. That's it for me today. This weekend has been quite a wet, stormy, typhoon weekend, so the energies are quite low. But let me know what you think about these stacks and uh, watch which other ones you should learn. Or which are you learning? Would you jump stack just because I showed you React is the most popular? It's kind of no surprise, right? Other than that, uh, like, sub, Discord, LinkedIn in the description, and I'll see you when I see you.